Today I want to share something with you that I feel will encourage you um, and, and it will really drive home the reality that we are very, very close to that day uh, that the church will be raptured off of the earth. Uh, I was going through some of my notes and found a uh, document that I had printed off uh, probably a few years ago. And what it is, is a, it's a prophetic utterance by Margaret MacDonald from 1830. All right, so in this prophetic utterance, Margaret was shown what the body of Christ, what the world looked like right at the time of the rapture of the church. And, uh, you know, if you know anything about this, you know, there's a lot of controversy that surrounds it. It's, it's kind of uh, crazy, I mean, that people would think that Margaret MacDonald originated the pre-tribulation rapture theory as if the Apostle Paul never wrote the book of Thessalonians. But if you question that, just go to 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18. It's very clear that the pre-tribulation rapture uh, comes from the Apostle Paul, it comes from the Bible. But anyway, so I feel like the Holy Spirit wants us to get some very important points that actually Margaret makes in this utterance that she was given, um, especially pertaining to the Holy Spirit and our need to be born again, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because the bottom line is, unless we have the Spirit of God within us, we will not see the kingdom of heaven. We will not see the kingdom of God. You know, Jesus told Nicodemus, in let's see John chapter 3 uh, starting in verse 3 you know he, Nicodemus came to Jesus questioning some things um, not really understanding who Jesus was and Jesus told him very truly I tell you no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again and then you know uh, in, in the next uh, few verses, he, he goes on to say, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and of the Spirit. Okay, so that's important to understand, you know, as I'm reading Margaret's prophetic utterance, because um, it, it's a key point that the Holy Spirit makes, you know, through this message he gives Margaret. Okay, so if you want to read this yourself, you can go out on Wikipedia and find it, but I'm going to read it to you just as I found it. All right. It was first the awful state of the land that was pressed upon me. I saw the blindness and infatuation of the people to be very great. I felt the cry of liberty just to be the hiss of the serpent, to drown them in perdition. It was just, quote, no God. I repeated the words, now there is distress of nation, nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear. Now look out for the sign of the Son of Man. Here I was made to stop and cry out, oh, it is not known what the sign of the Son of Man is. The people of God think they are waiting, but they know not what it is. I felt this needed to be revealed, and that there was great darkness and error about it, but suddenly what it was burst upon me with a glorious light. I saw it was just the Lord himself descending from heaven with a shout, just the glorified man, even Jesus, but that all must, as Stephen was, be filled with the Holy Ghost, that they might look up and see the brightness of the Father's glory. Okay. Now remember what Jesus told Nicodemus. He said, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Okay, so this is important to understand when we're talking about the appearing of Jesus to the church. I saw the air to be, that men think that it will be something seen by the natural eye, but tis spiritual discernment that is needed, the eye of God in his people. Many passages were revealed in a light which I had not before seen them. I repeated, Now is the kingdom of heaven like unto ten virgins, who went forth to meet the bridegroom, five wise and five foolish. They were they that were foolish took their lamps, but took no oil with them. But they that were wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine wherein in ex is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. 
And again, that, and that comes from uh, Isaiah chapter 29. This was the oil the wise virgins took in their vessels. This is the light to be kept burning, the light of God, that we may discern that which cometh, not with observation to the natural eye. And that's interesting that, you know, she would say that too, because, um, you know, Jesus also said about the, the coming of the kingdom of God, uh, Jesus said, the coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed, nor will people say, here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. And some verse, versions uh, say, I believe that it's in your heart. And that's very important. Just think about how the disciples, when they were, you know, waiting on the Messiah, they were looking for a king who would come and overthrow Rome. They were looking for something physical, right? They were looking uh, in, in the fleshly realm for something to happen. But that's not the way things happened. Everything that the Lord did um, was spiritual, all right? And again, today I feel we may be looking for something in, in the natural to happen, uh, but I believe it's going to be discerned in a spiritual way. And, and I think it's just important for us to realize that um, because, you know, unless we have the Holy Spirit, we're not going to be able, um, you know, to, to see what's coming. We're not going to be prepared for Jesus coming. We're not going to recognize him when he appears if we don't have the Holy Spirit. We can only discern uh, the, the evils that, that are coming on the earth, and we can only discern Jesus appearing through the Holy Spirit and being born again, okay? And that just cannot be emphasized enough. All right, and then she goes on to say, only those who have the light of God within them will see the sign of his appearance. No need to follow them who say, see here or see there. For his day shall be as the lightning to those in whom the living Christ is. Tis Christ in us that will lift us up. He is the light. Tis only those that are alive in him that will be caught up to meet him in the air. I saw that we must be in the spirit, that we might see spiritual things. John was in the spirit when he saw a throne set in heaven. But I saw that the glory of the ministration of the spirit had not been known. I repeated frequently, but the spiritual temple must and shall be reared. See, that's important to you, the spiritual temple. Again, you know, not to say that the, that a temple won't be built in Israel, a third temple, but we're looking to that as the sign. The question that I believe we as the body of Christ need to ask is, where's the spiritual temple? You know, we as the church are the temples of God. And is the body of Christ overflowing with the Holy Spirit? Are we being the third temple um, in the Spirit? that would be the sign of Jesus appearing uh, to the church to take the church home. Okay, so, but the spiritual temple must and shall be reared and the fullness of Christ be poured into his body and then shall we be caught up to meet him. Oh, none will be counted worthy of this calling but his body, which is the church and which must be a candlestick all, all of gold. I often said, oh, the right, the glorious inbreaking of God, which is now about to burst on this earth. Oh, the glorious temple, which is now about to be reared, the bride adorned for her husband. And oh, what a holy, holy bride she must be to be prepared for such a glorious bridegroom. I said, now shall the people of God have to do with realities. Now shall the glorious mystery of God in our nature be known. Now shall it be known what it is for man to be glorified. I felt that the revelation of Jesus Christ had yet to be opened up. It is not knowledge about God that it, can, that it contains, but it is an entering into God. I saw that there was a glorious breaking in of God to be. I felt as Elijah surrounded with chariots of fire. I saw as it were the spiritual temple reared and the headstone brought forth with shoutings of grace, grace unto it. It was a glorious light above the brightness of the sun that shone round about me. I felt that those who were filled with the Spirit could see spiritual things and, f and feel walking in the midst of them, while those who had not the Spirit could not see or could see nothing, so that two shall be in one bed, the one taken and the other left. 
because the one has the light of God within, while the other cannot see the kingdom of heaven. I saw the people of God in an awfully dangerous situation, surrounded by nets and entanglements about to be tried, and many about to be deceived and fall. Now will the wicked be revealed, with all power and signs and lying wonders, so that, if it were possible, the very elect will be deceived. This is the fiery trial which is to try us. It will be for the purging and purifying of the real members of the body of Jesus. But oh, it will be a fiery trial. Every soul will be shaken to the very center. Now mind you, I don't believe she is talking about the tribulation, which I think some people interpret that as the tribulation or as the Antichrist being revealed. I don't think that's what she means. I believe um, you know, she is talking about a level of evil that will be poured on the earth, which you don't have to look far to see that. Um, and she's talking about a fiery trial, which, you know, we know that the body of Christ is being, um, is being tested, you know, in, in nations around the world, beheadings and um, persecution. And, uh, of course, you know, this isn't the tribulation. I mean, this is just the enemy coming against the church because he knows his time is short. So, um, yeah, this is something that, again, you don't have to look very far to see it being fulfilled. The enemy will try to shake in everything we have believed, but the trial of real faith will be found to honor and praise and glory. Nothing but what is of God will stand. The stony ground hearers will be made manifest. The love of many will wax cold. I frequently said that night, and often since, now shall the awful sight of a false Christ be seen on this earth, and nothing but the living Christ in us can detect this awful attempt of the enemy to deceive. For it is with all deceivableness of unrighteousness he will work. And even though I don't, you know, think that um, she is talking about the Antichrist, I believe, you know, many of us have a, a thought or a sense of, of who that is. Even though he hasn't been revealed yet, um, I believe he is on this earth, and I believe we're seeing his work um, all around the world. He will have a counterpart for every part of God's truth and an imitation of the work of the Spirit. The Spirit must and will be poured out on the church that she may be purified and filled with God. And just in proportion as the Spirit of God works, so will He. When our Lord, when our Lord anoints men with power, so will He. This is particularly the nature of the trial through which those are to pass who will be counted worthy to stand before the Son of Man. There will be outward trial too, but tis principally temptation. It is brought on by the outpouring of the Spirit and with just increase in proportion as the Spirit is poured out. So in other words, what she's saying is that um, the, the trials that come against the church will be proportionate to the um, level of, of anointing that's poured out on the, the church. And, um, you know, I do believe we'll see that happening very soon. I, I believe we're right in, in, the, um, in the midst of that event where the, the Spirit is being poured out, that end time um, latter rain. And uh, I, I do, I think we're going to see um, more trials because of that. Okay. I frequently said, O oh, be filled with the Spirit, have the light of God in you, that you may detect Satan, be full of eyes within, be clay in the hands of the potter, submit to be filled, filled with God. This will build the temple. It is not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. This will fit us to enter into the marriage supper of the Lamb. I saw it to be the will of God that all should be filled. But what hindered the real life of God from being received by his people was their turning from Jesus, who is the way to the Father. And again, she's going to get into like the apostate um, church right now. And, uh, and, and I've put out a few videos about that. And, and I mean, this is just so obviously happening right now. But she says, uh, They were not entering in by the door, for he is faithful who hath said, By me, if any man enters, it in he shall find pasture. They were bypassing the cross through which every drop of the Spirit of God flows to us. All power that comes not through the blood of Christ is not of God. Okay. Um, and then she goes on to talk about the... Uh, there's just another paragraph. But she's basically saying, you know, we need a baptism of fire that uh, all the dross may be put away. 
and uh, that there has to be an indwelling of God within each member of the body of Christ. But um, this, it's taking me quite a while to get through this. But I, I wanted to share that part especially, and there's not very much left of it, but uh, to just make the point, you know, this whole ch this channel is all about recognizing our need for the Holy Spirit right now and that He is our light and He is the one who is giving us the power we need to be able to um, shine in this time of darkness. And, uh, you know, we have to recognize if we don't have, if we have not been born again, if we have not been born of the Spirit, you know, many people have just uh, been led to pray prayers, and many people have been fed a gospel that isn't the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, people go through motions, and, and there's so much apostasy. It, it's a almost guarantee most people have heard false teachings um, just to get you to come in and give money, whatever. And it's just really important that uh, every member of the body of Christ, every person who calls themselves a Christian, uh, recognizes if they have ever been reborn or born again. And family members, you know, especially, um, you know, people who you know have never really demonstrated a hunger for the, the Word of God, if you're born again, the evidence is there. You have, just like a baby hungers for milk, a new believer in Christ will hunger and thirst for the Word of God. It's it's insatiable, and um, and I'm sure the people listening to this video have all been born again and have had that. But many people, you know, may not have had that and may never have demonstrated any real interest in the Word of God. And and it's for them that um, you know I'm sharing this because. Unless we have the Spirit in us, we cannot see the Kingdom of God, and we can't discern the evils in this world right now. And most importantly, you know, we won't be counted worthy. You know, we need the blood of Jesus to cover us, and we need to be filled with His Spirit. That's the evidence, you know, that our sins have been forgiven when we're sealed with the Holy Spirit. And that's what makes us worthy. Um, so, anyway, I think, um, I think I've talked long enough. And, uh, but I, I hope that encourages you and blesses you.